Hey there everybody, this is Killin' Cat, but you can call me Patrick. Trust me, it's okay, everyone does. This is one of two mods I've wanted to cover that were made around Halloween for a specific Halloween contest, but I don't know how to compile the other mod, which is made by Anto Pikmin, so there is a chance I might not cover that one. I digress, let's get started. This mod is called Hallow's Haunts, and it's made by Nintendo Kluber, who's a regular at this point in my mod reviews for Pikmin. I could not beat this mod. I know what you're thinking. Was it too hard? No. Does it take too long or feel tedious like Pikmin 2e did? No. Is there some driving emotional context or nostalgia as to why I couldn't do it? Nope. No, this mod could not be beaten because the mod's entity and treasure generation are entirely broken. I would get to the final or maybe second to final area of the game, I don't know because I couldn't get past it, and the needed items to achieve the ending for getting 10,000 Pocos don't spawn in. I was missing two treasures in total, I believe. I. That's also why there's no long play of this mod. That's a huge bummer for me because I really wanted to be able to see that and give a genuine review or reaction to it, but that's not happening. Nonetheless, as is now a tradition for me, the links are in the description for my unedited footage, which is only about three parts. Even though I couldn't beat this mod, I did have a great time playing through it. I just can't, you know, beat it. That's a massive disappointment, I know, as much as I liked this mod, which I did really like this mod because I tried to beat it four different times. I'm not getting that ending, it's not happening. Each attempt took between 8 to 12 hours, and despite not being able to see this mod to completion, I'd say that was time well spent. Mind, I'm not trying to excuse that this mod is unbeatable most of the time, and how I was unable to get the ending for this review. No, that's absolutely terrible, and I don't know if it's inexcusable, Considering every area in this game is a brand new area, so maybe there's some issues with that. If you want to play a game that has an ending, or you can reach the ending, you will not be playing this. It's a shot in the dark as to whether or not you can actually get to that ending, and of my four different playthroughs, I didn't get it once. Once more, that's because the current build of the game has issues with spawning and generating items and enemies and treasures and all of that. There's also this moment in my footage, I think it's still in my footage, where uh, my white Pikmin just kind of die going up a slope. I don't know why that happened, but it makes me feel a little bit emotionally distraught. However, all things considered, the experience this mod brings to the table is actually really nice. Yeah, the generation is a bit messy, and the physics can be a bit buggy, as seen by Pikmin running up a slope and just dying on the spot, but the overall feel of this mod is just so pleasant. If those kinks can be ironed out, this will be up there for a must-play for short mods, because this is only 8 to 12 hours long. There are times where it's a bit too easy to get through some areas, but most of the time, the challenges and planning needed for the in-game days are very approachable with some moments where I had to really clinch because I didn't plan for that specific thing to happen. I appreciate that a lot, and it's been really cool to see Nintendo Kluber get better at balancing difficulty and challenge as he's gotten better as a mod creator. I guess a uh, haphazard transition here because I don't have a very good one. There is one new Pikmin type for this mod, but it's really just a reskinned Boldman. It is neat and fits the aesthetic of Halloween and the general fall feeling this mod gives off, which might I add is very well done. Like, uh, genuinely, I absolutely love the aesthetic that this mod has. It's great. Most of the assets are vanilla assets, but they have been tweaked, recolored, and reused a lot of the time, and there's no problem with that. If it's not broke, why fix it? Make sure to recycle. Normally, I'd say that a mod from a experienced Pikmin mod creator that uses mostly vanilla content, especially at this point in the lifetime of them creating mods, is kind of bland, even if it's enjoyable, but not so here. This mod might use vanilla content, but it uses the base game assets to create brand new geography in a way I haven't seen before. 
It feels both comfy in a way that you're used to and new in a way that's refreshing. Aside from the funny meme story and intro that makes my heart soar due to the music usage, this did manage to feel like a new, yet short, Pikmin experience. Most mods feel like how people interpret Pikmin, rather than how Pikmin is, and this mod manages to grab enough of that Pikmin feel to feel like a genuine expansion on Pikmin 2 content. If Nintendo could have done DLC back in the day, this would be a kind of map pack they would add to base game Pikmin 2, or at least very close to it. Now since I did mention story, I do now have to talk about it. I don't want to break down too much of what's going on because, well, there isn't too much going on. This is a rather straightforward and short experience of Bulbernard, a recurring character in Nintendo Clooper's mods, retelling his worst Halloween ever after he's 200 something years old. And it feels like a cartoon based on memes. Not like one of those cringy cartoons that tries to be based on memes that never really took off or succeeded, but a genuine meme cartoon, which is actually harder to do than it seems. The story is fun. It made both me and my wife laugh, and it's a lighthearted experience. If I tell you the things that made me laugh out of context, it would actually ruin it for you, at least I think so. And even if you don't get lucky enough to achieve the mod's ending, it's a funny story that works in context to the nature of the creator's works, and it should be at least partially experienced. I mean, just look at the weird Olimar and Louis fusions here. I actually think they're they're nice, aren't they? It's it's just simple enough to be something different and new. And at the same time, I think it's really silly and their naming conventions are really silly. Also, there may or may not be a dark context here to uh, Bull Bernard slowly losing his mind, but that's beside the point. I'm going to once more refrain from commenting too much on the music, though I did like the intro song, it's from one of my favorite GameCube games ever, Paper Mario, and is always a solid song. For what it's worth, in my opinion, I did like the soundtrack to this game. Lots of nostalgic tracks, and there's just enough to set the mood for each area and each cave slash dungeon you explore. The third area's music fits the absolute best of the primary overworld songs. The world map music put me in the mood to keep exploring as well. And explore I did. Caves in this mod are all enjoyable. I know, that's that's a that's not a common thing I say, is it? Now some caves are too easy here and there, but too easy is better than too hard, and this mod never gets so easy as to just turn off your brain and stop thinking, which is the worst kind of ease for a real-time strategy game. Too easy is most often better than too hard, unless you just turn off your brain at that point. And thankfully this gets right in that zone where it's not a huge problem to be easy, even if it is noticeable. It's just a thing that is worth keeping note of for future reference, and I do think you guys know which caves are too easy, and other people that have played the mod will probably also realize which caves are too easy. But it's not full caves, usually it's just isolated to maybe one or two floors, but this mod is also super short, so it doesn't matter a lot. Essentially what I'm saying is, this is the perfect middle zone. The game's not playing itself or something along those lines, and that's a good thing. Every area and cave in this mod proved to be thoroughly enjoyable experiences, and I would love to see more mods take on similar designs for approachability and fun. I don't think tutorial areas have been mastered quite yet, but it was an above average job, and that more than gets the job done. I think my favorite cave this time around is the Water Wraiths cave. The Water Wraiths boss arena is also actually really well made for him. And I do know it's almost wholly a base game area, but there was a missed chance to make this that boss's arena in the base game. The tight corridors, the small circular room, the fact the Water Wraith's treasure doesn't get detected until you beat it. There's a huge issue with pathfinding for the Water Wraith sometimes in this area. And that's because it'll just run into a wall and stay that way until attacked with purple Pikmin. It's pretty rare, 
And I think other than that, this is just a great choice for area and enemy placement for this whole cave. The final boss is a bit bugged. The arena for it is really cool though. Maybe just expand it, widen it a bit, because it was just so easy to hurl Pikmin at this thing. It would clip right into the ground and hold up weapons for me to attack. That being said, I am at the end of this mod review. I can't think of a whole bunch of other things to say about this mod. It is really short and it is loads of fun, even if you can't achieve the ending. If you value the journey over the destination, this is a good fit for you, unless this mod gets fixed and is completable at some point, which I can only hope for because as I said, this was a really fun experience and I want to reach the destination. But hey, if it does get fixed and is fully completable, that just satisfies both parties. Keep in mind, Nintendo Kluber and everyone he works with are still hard at work on another big project. Pardon me for not being able to list everyone vocally here, there's a lot of people helping with that one mod. And if the area design is half as good as what this mod has, that mod will be a must play. I don't expect the same level of comfort you'll get from this mod, but that's perfectly fine. I don't care about that comfort zone, personally speaking. I'm here for that new Pikmin experience, beginning to end, which is why I do this kind of thing. And Kluber and the folks that work with him are so close to having that new Pikmin experience feeling down, and have their own style to inject into it too. It's an overall great experience. Here's hoping Lost Hope is also out at some point too, so I can run through that one. It's looking pretty good. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and if you like my stuff, then like, comment, and subscribe. Support me by checking the links in the description below, and the best way to support me is through YouTube membership. You can also support me on Patreon and Coffee by via donations there, but YouTube membership is where it's at, and you'll be able to get all my videos early. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time for more. Bye.